the first folks that we met were um, Mahoma, Lopez, um, Gonzalo Jimenez, who those were the two leaders, the worker leaders of the campaign, and Virgilio Aran, who is the main organizer in the story. And, um, and all three of them were very open to having the campaign documented. I think at that point they had just started, they felt like they were already making gains in their workplace. They were really, um, they were really pumped about doing this campaign and they were excited about being, uh, you know, I think it, it made them feel even more significant. Uh, they knew they had the potential to really, you know, achieve something um, historic and unusual and then they were excited to have that process documented. Um, I mean we weren't familiar with the labor movement or with um, immigrant worker issues particularly um, so we spent a lot of time in the beginning and all the way through talking to everyone, the organizers, the lawyers, the workers, but in, in particular the organizers and the lawyers who had been through it multiple times. You know what can we expect and um, you know, there was a certain amount, uh, it, more than anything, it happened faster than we expected. And, uh, yeah. but they were able to predict, uh, you know, everything that happened is somewhat typical. You know, often someone will accept a deal with the company and leave the campaign. Often companies will close a store uh, when faced with difficult negotiations. And so there's a lot uh, that was relatively typical, even though the whole thing played out much more dramatically than we imagined. I think the risks were so much higher for them that we were more concerned that they would get arrested. Um, you know, in, in protests, there's always the risk of getting arrested, and you know, we were familiar with that risk from previous experience and I don't think we were too worried um, but uh, there was definitely the risk that that might happen to them. Yeah I mean we we, we had some kind of uh, anxiety producing moments here and there. I was, it was a little bit um, nerve-wracking for me to walk into the headquarters of Hacks Wholesome Foods during this one scene in the film and like be told repeatedly to stop shooting and continue shooting but it was, it was you know it's it was a new kind of uh, filmmaking for me. I hadn't done the kind of um, you know, it was almost like a Michael Moore moment, I think. Um, but we never, we never were at any kind of risk at the level that the workers were. And I think the camera can be very comforting. I think being behind equipment um, kind of removes you from the action. And if you if you use it that way, you can um, find more courage than you might think you have. Um, certainly, our experience documenting Occupy Wall Street, we were in slightly more dangerous situations than making this film. Um, but there's something about you know considering yourself part of the press. Um, that gives you this sort of audacity, like what, how how dare you tell me to move? I'm I'm with I have a camera, you know, and I think that can help. That can help, like, give yourself the courage you need to get the interesting footage. That said, it can be a target. I, I was going to say that you <laughs> yeah. know we at, at Occupy Wall Street at some of the bigger, um, more rowdy protest events. There, I did feel a lot more physically threatened than I did at the stuff we were shooting for this film. And I think that there were a lot of press and um, and camera people that, you know, got their heads cracked and their cameras broken and all kinds of stuff that really is illegal, but it does happen. So, I mean, I think you have to gauge the situation and know your rights. Cops will routinely tell you to stop filming. I just got to the point where I would say, no, I have a right to stand here and film. And they would kind of stop bothering me because it, it was true. There are a lot of groups that are working on stories like this. Um, the tactics aren't always the same exactly, the situations aren't always the same, but, um, but we're, we're building a network of national partners who have local affiliates all over the country um, and we want to get the ha the film into the hands of people that can have community dialogues with it. I mean I think screening here at American University is a, a r definitely part of that vision. We, we want to screen on campuses, we want to be part of broader dialogues about um, what social movements are and mean and can do and I think that involves you know bringing it to workers, bringing it to students, bringing it to broader communities. There's a lot of different uh, 
uh, ways that plays out. Yeah, I think Occupy Wall Street to me was, um, it was just one manifestation of a moment in the country where the issue of economic inequality really took over um, and, and people all over the country, all sorts of ordinary Americans, people who weren't occupying parks, um, felt very strongly about that issue. And I felt proud to be part of that movement and that moment. And I think our film reflects, um, reflects that. I think working with activists, you have a challenge because a lot of times they have their narratives of what they want to say to cameras. And um, they have often experience speaking with the media. And so they will kind of give you their message. And sometimes it doesn't feel genuine. Sometimes it feels a little bit too, um, too on point, just too rehearsed. So I think it, it takes a lot both in the production to sort of get more from activists uh, than that, and then also you know get them to say make the argument a slightly different way. Or how would you explain it to someone who, you know, without talking about, without saying the word class struggle, you know. <laughs>